how to easily get your ex back. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to get your ex-boyfriend back. I'm gonna explain the psychology behind it and exactly what to do. I know it might not seem like it at the moment, but getting your ex back is actually really easy and simple, as long as you have the right information, and I'm gonna break it all down for you. It's Sabrina, your personal love advisor from A New Mode, the channel where we show you how love actually works. I've been a relationship expert for the last 10 years, and not only that, but getting my ex back has actually completely changed my life because we actually got married and we have two beautiful children. So this is definitely a very passionate subject for me and I'm really excited to tell you guys everything I know. Real quick, if you like this video or any of my videos, please give me a like, please subscribe to our channel, please share this with your friends, especially any of your friends who are going through a breakup right now. It will really help me out and it will really help me grow this channel. There is nothing more brutal than a breakup. It is such an isolating experience. It really feels like this pain is yours and yours alone and no one in the world could possibly understand what you're going through. But believe me, I do. I have been there. I've been through the worst of it. I so feel your pain. You have no idea how much I feel your pain. I have really been through it and I've come out the other end. So believe me, you will be okay. We're gonna talk this through. So make sure you watch this video all the way until the end. So here's the thing. Most people get back together for the wrong reasons. And that's why it ends in disaster for a second time and a third time. And sometimes it, you guys can be on again, off again for years and years. And that is just a complete mess, a complete disaster. And that's what we don't want. It is absolutely possible to get your ex back and to make it work, but it doesn't just happen because you want it to. The rule is if it didn't work, it won't work unless something significant changes. And change takes time. You also need to know what you're doing. You need to have the right information. And that's why I'm here. If you wanna get your ex back and you want the relationship to work, you have to follow the steps I'm gonna outline in this video. Okay, so step one is follow the no contact rule. Now, this doesn't apply if you broke up with him because anytime I do videos like this, I always get questions like, but what if I broke up with him? If you broke up with him, then call him up, explain that you realize you made a mistake, be genuine, be heartfelt, tell him what was going on in your mind, and that should be enough. He most likely will get back together with you. Now, if he broke up with you, that's a different set of circumstances, and that's not as easy as picking up the phone. In fact, you are not going to pick up the phone. The first step is to do nothing. It is to not contact him for a period of at least three weeks. I know that this is not what you wanna do, and this is not what you wanna hear. You wanna call him, you wanna get closure, you wanna work things out and talk things through. But the fact that he broke up with you means that he does not want to do any of those things. That is the last thing that he wants right now. So do not contact him. I cannot stress this enough. Do not beg him to take you back, because if you do this, not only will he not be in your life anymore, but you're gonna lose a big chunk of your dignity as well. If you keep reaching out to him, he's just gonna feel more and more justified in his decision to end the relationship with you. He's gonna feel like, oh, I'm so glad I got rid of that needy, dramatic, crazy girl or whatever, because that's how you're gonna come across if you keep contacting him and you can't leave him alone. You're gonna come across as needy and dramatic and crazy. And I'm pretty sure you don't wanna come across as any of those things. So do not contact him for now. No one is ever fully confident in their decision to break up with someone else. There is never 100% certainty in that situation. And this can really work in your favor. But if you keep reaching out, he's just gonna be more and more sure that breaking up with you was the right decision. You need to give it time and space before you can do anything. And this isn't for him. This is really for you. You need to emotionally detox from it all. Relationships, especially when you're at the end of a relationship, are so dramatic and intense and draining. There are so many toxic emotions flooding your entire being right now, and you gotta flush them out. You gotta flush out the poison and start anew. So that's what we're focusing on. And you need space from him in order to properly do that. You need space from him in order to fully detox from all of the emotional trauma. I mean, at best, breakups are just sad. At worst, they are downright traumatic. You broke up because the relationship was broken. Right now, you need to fix your half of that hole. I'm not saying that the breakup was all your fault or whatever, but that's who we're working with right now. We're working with you. You need to focus on putting yourself back together. Another important thing you need to realize is if you don't reach out to him, he's gonna wonder why. It's gonna be a shock to his system and his mind is gonna go to the worst places. He's gonna be thinking, did she move on already? Is she with somebody else? Did she never really love me? He's gonna be utterly shocked and confused as to why you're not reaching out to him. So basically, you're gonna be getting stronger while he's getting weaker. Now you're more in the position of power and he's not because he's completely confused 
confused. He has no idea what's going on, but you know perfectly well what's going on. You know that you are completely taking space for yourself at this present moment and you're not even thinking about him. Speaking of, no contact doesn't work in a vacuum. It's what you're doing during this period of no contact that determines if you guys will get back together or not. It's not like, okay, I waited 30 days, I didn't contact him, now he's just gonna call me and he's gonna confess his love and we're gonna get back together and we're gonna live happily ever after. It doesn't work that way. It's not only about what you're doing during this period of time, it's what you're not doing. And what you are not doing is obsessing over him, you're not playing the relationship over and over and over in your mind on loop, you are not thinking about him endlessly, you're not stalking his social media accounts, you're not crying to your girlfriends, you're not burying your face in a tub of ice cream, you're not doing any of those things. And we're gonna talk about what you are doing in step number two. Step two in this process is putting yourself back together. No contact is the passive part. You're not doing something. Now we're getting to the action steps. We are gonna talk about what you are doing. And what you are doing is rebuilding yourself and rebuilding your life. First, you have to look at where it all went wrong. This is important because you need to know what went wrong in order to know if things can be fixed. Whenever there's a breakup, there's always a surface reason and then there's the real reason. So the surface reason could be, we broke up because he wouldn't really commit to me in a significant way. That's the surface reason. The real reason could be, we broke up because we had so many fundamental incompatibilities and we just couldn't meet in the middle. That's the real reason. So you need to take a look at what the real reason is and be honest with yourself as to whether or not it can be resolved. Because if it can't, then there's no point in having history repeat itself. Love isn't enough. Missing each other isn't enough. Sometimes it just isn't a match. So be honest. If you are, if you want kids and he never wants kids, that's not going to change. That's not going to change because you love each other and miss each other. That will only change if someone changes their mind and you can actually come to an agreement about that. If you can't, and you can't. What else is there to talk about? You also need to be honest with yourself. Was this a healthy relationship? Because not all exes are worth revisiting. Okay, so let's talk about some questions that you're gonna ask yourself during this time of rebuilding yourself. Number one, do I really want him back or do I just not wanna be alone? Was this a healthy relationship or was it toxic? Were we codependent? Were we, did we just bring out the worst in each other? And like I said before, can you fix what broke? Breakups don't usually just happen one day. They happen because of a buildup of things that happen over time. Do you honestly believe that the issues can be resolved? You have to realize that our heart doesn't always pull us towards what will make us happy. Oftentimes our heart pulls us towards what's familiar or what satisfies an emotional need for us. And maybe going back to a toxic situation just feels familiar to you. Maybe your parents were, you know, had a toxic relationship and that's what you saw growing up. So maybe it almost feels comfortable for you to be in a relationship like this. You really have to dig deep and see what it is that you had with him and whether it's worth revisiting. Because like I said, not all exes are worth revisiting. Love isn't enough. Missing him isn't enough. Was this a good, happy, healthy, stable relationship? The way to know this is how did you feel in the relationship? Did you feel happy overall? Did you feel at ease? Do you feel like you could enjoy the other person? Or did you feel like you were always walking on eggshells? Did you feel like the rug was just gonna be pulled out from under you at any minute? Did you feel like you were always trying to prove yourself to him? Also, did you kind of feel like you were his mom? This is a very common scenario because women are very nurturing by nature. And in codependent relationships, you could end up in a cycle where the guy is kind of a and you're kind of his caretaker and you end up in this mother-son dynamic. So that's something to really watch out for because it's something that I see a lot. Also, what emotional itch was this relationship scratching? Because there's always something. A lot of the times we're drawn to people who remind us of our most difficult parent. Is that what you had going on here? Maybe your father never made you feel like you were good enough and this guy never makes you feel good enough and so that kind of feels good? In a way, the point here is if you felt absolutely awful in the relationship, what exactly is it you wanna go back to and why? So really take the time to ask yourself these difficult questions and be honest with yourself. And if you can't be honest with yourself, talk to a friend or family member or even better, a therapist who will be honest with you. Say to them, I want your honest opinion. Are there things I need to work on in myself? Did you think that my relationship was healthy? And listen to what they have to say. Don't just jump in with, but, 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 no, just listen, hear them out. They probably have a lot more insight than you realize. Well, now we're gonna talk about rebuilding yourself because what draws us into bad relationships and what keeps us there is low self-esteem. It's because you don't feel like you deserve better. So that's why you settle for something that just isn't what you want. The subconscious is always looking for validation. If you don't feel good about yourself, if you don't 
don't feel good enough, then you're going to look for ways to validate that. That means you're going to date people who validate that. You're going to date people who just make you feel terrible and you're going to stay because deep down you think that that's what you deserve. Until you realize this and work through whatever it is you need to work through, you really shouldn't be with this guy or with anyone because these are the most important things that you need to deal with. Essentially, the most important question you need to ask yourself is, do I like myself? Do I love myself? If you can't give that a strong yes, then you have some work to do. It's time to have a full, happy, amazing life. Obviously, this is gonna make your life better overall, but this is really what it's gonna take in order to get your ex-boyfriend back. So we're not focusing on him during no contact. You are focusing on you. You are focusing on being your absolute best self. This means that you find things that you're passionate about. Maybe do volunteer work, read some books, Maybe try to write a book, maybe write some poems, maybe take an art class, take a cooking class, take a knitting class, take a sewing class, take a dance class, go to exercise class, go to the gym, join a book club. There are so many outlets out there for you to pursue a passion, to find a passion. You might discover something you didn't even know that you were passionate about. Go do those things. That's what you have to do right now. Do not sit at home and feed into the misery. The more you do that, the more it's gonna fester, it's gonna grow, it's gonna absolutely consume you. And that is going to just wreck your self-esteem. It's gonna wreck your life. It is gonna completely hinder you from moving on. It will completely hinder you from getting back together with this guy. So just don't go there. You have to make the active choice every single day. I am not gonna feed into the misery. Whenever you have a thought about your ex-boyfriend, which is gonna happen. I mean, you're not a robot. You can't just deprogram him from your mind. Don't feed into the, oh, I miss him so much. I'm never gonna find anyone like him. How am I ever gonna go on? How am I ever gonna get through this? Don't do that. Just recognize it as, okay, I had a thought about Mark or whatever. And of course it's natural to be thinking about him, but I'm gonna choose right now to focus on something else. I'm gonna choose to focus my energy on something else because focusing on him right now isn't healthy for me and tell that to yourself as many times as you need. The first time, it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna feel natural. By the hundredth time, it is just gonna be so ingrained and your mind, it's gonna be wired into you. You're gonna know, okay, we're not thinking about that right now. We're focusing on other things right now. The key to happiness is perspective. And when you are in that emotional whirlpool, you have no perspective. You cannot see things clearly. You can't see past your own pain and your own suffering. With a little bit of space and distance, you will gain that perspective. But it's a myth that time heals. Time doesn't heal nothing. Time does nothing. You need to do the work. It's an active process. It's not a passive process. You're not going to wake up one day and say, oh, I'm over my issues. Time just made them melt right away. That's not how it works. Nothing's going to happen to your issues. They're just going to stay there in the recesses of your mind. And they're just going to be activated when you least expect it. Something's going to happen. That's just going to trigger that pain. And it's going to come exploding out of you. And it's just not going anywhere until you deal with it. I'm sorry. You got to deal with it. It's just the only way you need to focus on what makes you feel alive and we all have that something we all have that something that makes us feel like this is what I was put in this world to do this is it do that thing also I feel like we should share what our things are in the comment section let's really lean on the community here we have such a solid community at a new mode so share in the comment section what you're passionate about or things that you're considering trying maybe you want to learn how to be good at photography maybe you want to learn how to paint whatever it is let's share it let's hold each other accountable for me honestly making these YouTube videos is really what I feel like is my passion and writing about relationships and giving advice so I'm really lucky that it's my career but that's something that fuels me that makes me feel alive so find what that thing is for you. What you're doing during the no contact period is of utmost importance. I can't stress this enough. It's really important that you take this time to detox yourself so that you can heal and be stronger than ever. We actually have a best-selling book. So me, if you don't know about a new mode, um, my co-founder is Eric Charles. So he and I wrote a book called Get Him Back, where we break down everything you need to know in order to get your ex-boyfriend back. And we talk a lot about the no contact period and how to build yourself back up, as well as pretty much everything you need to do and avoid doing after a breakup in order to guarantee you get your ex back. I can't put it all in this video because then it'll be five hours long and no one's gonna sit through that. But we do have an amazing book called Get Him Back that you absolutely must check out if you want to learn more about this. So if you want to download it, just go to easyexpect.com where you can download it instantly and check it out. Okay, now let's talk about step three. Let him come to you. After a period of no contact for at least three weeks, sometimes it could take longer, your ex most likely will reach out or he might put out some feelers. He might put out some breadcrumbs. Maybe you notice he starts liking your pictures on Facebook or on Instagram. You notice he starts watching your stories. All of a sudden, he's a little bit back in your life. Even if he 
he hasn't directly reached out to you. I wanna say if he is breadcrumbing you a little bit and he is like putting out those little feelers, liking your pictures, don't react, do nothing unless he actually calls you or texts you or makes official conversation. Liking your pictures on, on Instagram does not count as making contact with you. If he hasn't done anything and it's been at least three weeks, sure, you can go ahead and reach out to him. But I would say, don't you know ask him if he wants to meet up for a drink or meet up for coffee. Send a friendly text his way and let him be the one to initiate hanging out with you. You have to let him do the work here. So yes, you are doing the work by reaching out to him first, which again, I wouldn't advise, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But if you are like, it's been three weeks and you really wanna reach out to him, and we're gonna talk about more about the headspace that you should be in. Keep watching, we have a lot more to cover here. Again, let him do the work, let him ask you out, let him take things further. Okay, so if you are holding your breath, waiting for him to contact you, if the thought of contacting him literally makes you shake, if you can't even catch your breath, do not contact him, you're not ready. You need more time on your own to focus on yourself, build yourself up. You are not ready to contact him. So if you are just so nervous and if you just feel like I better hear back from him or I better get a positive response from him and if I don't, then I'm just gonna crumble into utter despair. You're not ready. Do not reach out to him. You need more no contact time. You need to have a carefree attitude. One where if you get a positive response from him, that'll make you feel good. You'll be happy about it. But if you don't, you know that you'll be okay. You know that, okay, now I know that I did whatever it is that I could do. I really worked on myself. I'm my best and if he's not receptive to that he's not interested in getting back together maybe he's moved on to someone else that's it i know i'll be fine i'm gonna find someone else i'll move on that's it that's the attitude you need to have that's the winning attitude and once you're in that headspace then go ahead and contact him but most likely he'll contact you and it's honestly just more ideal to let him contact you again if he's doing things indirectly to get your attention do not pounce on that just ignore it as best you can you have a lot more control over your mind than you think so just don't feed into those thoughts if like you see Oh, he liked my content. Oh, okay, now I need to message him and send him whatever, just no, 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 no. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the psychology that a man goes through after a breakup and how you can use this in your favor to get him back. Again, if you like this part, you wanna know more about the psychology of what goes on in a man's mind after a breakup and what to do to easily and effectively get him back and get your relationship back on track, then go to easyxpack.com, download our book right away. It has all the information that you need. Like I said earlier, nobody is ever 100% confident in their decision to break up with someone else. Sometimes he could be 60% sure, 40% unsure. Sometimes he's 95% sure and he's only 5% unsure. That 5% still works in your favor. When you don't reach out to him, the percentage that he was unsure of the breakup continues to go up and the percentage of him being short continues to go down. He's used to having you in his life. He's used to you just being there. And he expected you to kind of be there even when he broke up with you. Maybe he expected, okay, I just need some time, I need to do my own thing, I need to date around, whatever it is. And when I wanna get back together with her, she'll be there. She's not gonna go anywhere. She's so obsessed with me, she is never gonna move on. So I can take all the time I need and she'll just be there. When you're not there, when you're not contacting him, when you're not reaching out to him, he's like, what's going on? This is completely unexpected. I read this situation all wrong. And he is gonna to go to the worst case scenario. That's what the human mind does. We automatically assume the worst. And at the same time, when something isn't in our life anymore, we idolize it and we only think about the best. So that's why this is all working in your favor because you're not there anymore. He's assuming the worst. And because you're not there, you're really not there. You're completely not in his life anymore. He's never had that before. He's just used to you just being there. He's idolizing you and thinking about all the good times. And he's forgetting about all the reasons why you guys broke up. When this happens, he'll most likely put out feelers and he'll reach out to you. Now, it's really important that you don't pounce right away. When he reaches out to you, do not say, oh my God, I've been waiting for this moment. I love you so much. I miss you so much. If he has this feeling in his mind, like, oh, all I need to do is snap my finger and she's just gonna show up at my door and be a loving girlfriend again, then, He's gonna go back to being, uh, I don't know, I think that it was probably best that we broke up. If you are a little bit reticent, show him that you're actually happy being single. Maybe he puts out some feelers about you guys getting back together. You don't pounce right away and say, yes, take me, I'm yours. Instead, you say, you know, like I've really been enjoying this time being single and on my own, but if you wanna get back together, that's a conversation that we can have. That's it, you're not just pouncing on him. Like, I need you, yes. Thank you, thank you for coming back into my life and saving me from the depths of my despair. No, you saved yourself. You're saving yourself. You don't need him for that. The worst thing you can do is just give him the impression that you are just waiting in the wings, waiting for him to just come back and snatch you up. He needs to be under the impression that he could lose you at any moment because you're moving on. You're a happy, fulfilled, confident woman who can get any guy because that's how you're conducting yourself and those are the thoughts that you have instilled in your mind. 
That's the impression that he needs to be under. Now, this is very important. Wondering if he still has you makes him want you back. Knowing he still has you diminishes those feelings. You need to be pleasant without being so reassuring. Again, like I said, if he reaches out to you, if he wants to see you, don't be so reassuring. Be nice, be friendly, but poker face. Don't give all your cards away. Don't immediately pounce at the chance to be back together with him. He needs to prove himself to you. Now, what if he doesn't reach out to you? Like I said, put out some feelers, but that's it. And if he doesn't really reciprocate, not really giving you anything to hold on to, not really sending anything back your way, then just forget it. At least at this point, you've spent time working on yourself where, you know, if you don't get a positive response from him, you're already most of the way moved on. You've already rebuilt your life. You've been spending time with friends. You've been pursuing your passions. You're really getting back in touch with who you are. Then at least you've already, you know, begun the moving on process and you can just continue that. You're in a much better position. You're not gonna get, you know, your heart trampled over for a second time. And if he's wishy-washy with you, he kind of seems like he wants to get back together, he kind of seems like he doesn't, you don't really know where he stands, you can just say, I am completely happy being single right now. If you want to get back together, that's definitely a discussion we could have. But if you don't, then we need to just go our separate ways because I just don't think it's healthy for us to be in each other's lives um, in this capacity. And that's it, have boundaries, set your boundary, whatever it is and stick to it. It really is all very simple once you know what to do. Getting your ex back is an incredibly easy and predictable process when you know what goes on in his head and the right steps that you need to take in order to get yourself to the best possible place that you can be. This is when you not only get your ex back, you basically can get any man that you want. The thing is when you're in it, when you're so emotionally overwhelmed, you can't think straight. Your head is completely in a fog. You lose clarity on what it is you're supposed to do. To make things worse, it's like all your habits and instincts betray you when you need them the most. And you might do things that push him away instead of bringing him closer, which is what you really want. When you know exactly what to do, you can keep yourself calm. You can be confident in the decisions that you're making. And that is why you really need to check out our book, Get Him Back. It has helped tens of thousands of women. The testimonials I get are unbelievable. Even getting messages from women who are like, I'm now married to my ex-boyfriend and now we have kids and now I'm following you for, you know, kid advice where, you know, for baby advice. Whereas, cause I post a lot of that on Instagram, follow me at a new mode. It's crazy. I mean, these women are like, I found you when I was single. I started following your advice. I'm back with my ex and now we are married and now we have children. And that is what I want for you. If, assuming that's what you want for yourself. I mean, it's unbelievable. The system works. The testimonials I get are incredible and it will be easy for you. Trust me, I lived it. I lived it. I know. I know I've lived it. I've seen other people live it. Go to easyexpect.com where you can download your copy immediately. I'm so excited for you to read it and I can't wait to hear what you think. You will be shocked when you put this to work in your life and the results that you will get. And like I said, I'm so excited to hear back from you when you put this in action and I can't wait to hear your ex back success stories. I know it feels really tough right now, but trust me, it doesn't have to be. Whether you just wanna move on or you wanna get him back, this is the book you need to read. It's called Get Him Back and it's at easyxback.com. I really hope you liked this video. If so, please give it a like, please subscribe to our channel, please share this video, especially if you know someone who's going through a breakup right now, definitely share it with them. Leave me a comment letting me know what you think or if you have any questions, I try to answer all of them and I will see you guys in the next video.